So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Dreamforce, and welcome to this talk with an overview of the Salesforce platform. My name is Dan Valsante. I'm from Holland, from Amsterdam, working as a cloud architect for Salesforce. As a first slide, I have to remind you to the fact that we are a publicly traded company. So please advise your, or please take your purchasing decisions based on what's currently available and not based on any future developments. Let's talk about the Salesforce platform. So what it actually is. Many of you probably know Salesforce from our sales cloud and service cloud offerings and CRM and service. But actually, this, the platform is also an enterprise-grade platform as a service. That actually means it will also allow you to build your apps on it. The platform comes with a, a wide array of capabilities and features that we use ourselves to build the sales and service cloud and other applications on, but they're also available for you to do so. Essentially, it, help you to, it will help you to build your apps around your customers faster, and those can be apps for customers, partners, and employees. The apps that you build will come with trust and security just built right in them as they leverage all of the technology that we have within our platform. With three releases per year, we give you the latest innovations, and examples of these are Einstein, our artificial intelligence platform, but also IoT that will help you to connect a wide array of devices and ingest all the events that they produce. And on top of that, there's the App Exchange, where you can find a ton of components and apps themselves that you can use to enrich the apps that you want to build. So how does the platform help you to build applications in a very fast way? Traditionally, you probably would have been focusing on buying hardware, software, networking equipment in order to piece together a development stack that you can then use to build your applications. Like I said a minute ago, our platform comes with a wide array of features and capabilities. Those are the same that we use to build our apps with, like Sales Cloud, like I said. And these capabilities are available to you. And I'll just name a few examples. We can do data modeling, sharing models, workflow, dashboards, reporting, security. And there's actually more to it. So in that way, you'll get kind of a head start. And the time to deployment will be very, very quick. So what kind of customizations can we do within the platform? And we essentially focus on three different layers. The first one is the data model layer. Then we do customizations to the user interface. And also, we do customizations on the business logic itself. We can do those customizations in roughly two ways. First of all, we can do this declaratively. With that, we're trying to say it's primarily done using point-and-click tools, using configuration rather than coding. And the other way of making customizations to the platform and build your apps is programmatically. And examples of these are Lightning Components, Apex Code, Visual Force, and integration using APIs. An example of a customization to the data model is the creation of a custom object inside of the platform that will, ho that will hold records of your data. If you do that using a few clicks behind the scenes, the platform will generate the appropriate data storage in the database, but it will also create a user interface for you, so you don't have to do that yourself. You can, of course, customize that, as we will show in a demo later on. So what tools are actually available to, to build your apps on our platform? The first one is the setup menu. If you're an existing Salesforce user, chances are pretty big that you've already touched this, as this is the primary go-to tool for any declarative customization that we do. So that example of creating a custom object, that is exactly what you will do in the setup menu. Besides that, we have the developer console. It's a standard part of the platform, and it is the default place where we can do anything that requires writing code. Writing code, let's say Apex again, lighting components, and so forth. And then thirdly, and it's GA as of winter 18, the latest release, we have Salesforce DX, the developer experience. And Salesforce DX brings a new way of development of apps onto the Salesforce platform. And it focuses on three key things. First of all, it is source driven. In the past, the truth for a Salesforce app was in an org with Salesforce DX that now is in source code, and you can use any version control system of your choice. Secondly, it's very rapid, and we provide scratch org that can be spun up on an automated way that allow for automated testing and continuous delivery. And thirdly, it is open, so you can use any development tool that you would like uh, 
like all of your developers, probably have their own preferences, and you can use that with the X. So let's now see how we can build a very small app on the platform. And the app that, will, that we will build is for an animal shelter. And it will keep track of, let's say, inbound cats that need a new home and people who are looking for cats. We will build the app. And we will also leverage a capability of the Einstein artificial intelligence platform to classify our cats using image recognition. After that's done, we'll have a couple slides to finish the demo and the presentation. <coughs> So first of all, we are logged into an empty Salesforce environment here. And what we can do is navigate to this setup menu for declarative customizations. So let's go there by clicking on the gear icon and using setup. Once we are in there, we actually want to work on our data model. So a nice way to do that is by using our schema builder. If we open the schema builder, let's give it a little moment to go there, we can see that We've pre-configured one custom uh, object, which is the interested person object, and it will hold all the information about people who are looking for a new, a new pet, a new cat. But we will need a, another object as part of this app. And let's drag this on here. The label of that object will be a cat. Plural will be cats. And for the rest, well, let's allow reports. Might be nice. So, and conclude this by clicking Save. We also want to keep track of the particular breed of the cat, but we don't have a field to accommodate that just yet. So the way to do that is by using a pick list value. And we'll drop that just on a cat here and call the field cat breed. And the breed could be of different types. So it could be a sphinx, a British short hair, or maybe a Bengal cat. So let's save that. So this is a way to, let's say, create your data model inside of Salesforce. Let's now switch over to creating the actual user interface and the application itself. So first we close the schema builder. And what we now need to do is create a tab that we can then use inside of our UI. And we can do that inside our user interface section here. And we'll click on tabs. We have already pre-configured the tab for the interested people object, but we will need to add one for our cats. So the object will be cat, and we will need to give it a tab style. Unfortunately, we don't have any animals available, so I'll just use alarm clock for this demo. We'll click Next. Then we will accept the details and allow all user profiles to have access to this tab, so that's OK. And we're not going to include it into an app just yet, because the, pet rescue app, the cat rescue app hasn't been built yet. So we'll deselect that and click Save. So the tab is now finished. And let's now bring this all together into an app that we can then use within, within Salesforce. So we go to Apps on our left-hand side of the screen here and go to App Manager. Once we are there, we'll click on New Lightning App to create the app itself. We'll give it a name, Cat Rescue. The developer name is generated, a description, this app will keep track of cats and interested people. We, we can, are also able to give it an image, a nice little icon to have it show up in the app launcher, as we will see in a minute. So we'll pick that file. File is uploading. And there's our icon. So there we go. And we could even give it a color, but let's not do that for now. We'll click Next. Standard navigation will do for this app. For some apps, you might want to use console, but we don't need it for this particular application. So we'll click Next. Utility bar, also not needed. So we'll move on with Next. And then we can say what items we will have available inside our app here. So first of all, we're interested in the various cats. So that's there. We also want chatter groups, as those are the groups of people where we can, let's say, kind of forum-like functionality, where we can keep track of people uh, who are interested in particular breeds of cats. And also, the interested people themselves. Let's put them on and maybe reorder this a little. Then we click Next. Finally, we need to grant access to this app to one or more user profiles. In this demonstration, I'm just using one user profile and one user, which is the system administrator. But in real life, you would assign the real user profiles here for your apps. And we click Save and Finish. The app is now done. We can show the app 
by clicking on the app launcher here on the top left. And then it follows well, and there it is. We see our nice little cat rescue app. Let's open it and see how it looks like. The default user interface will give us inside in cats, interested people, and groups. Those were the items we just selected. Let's give it some data. So first, a few cats. And if you've been to DreamFest last night, let's, let's use Lenny Kravitz here as a name for the cat and make a new one. We'll do Alicia Keys as well and click Save. So we now have two cats within our app here. We could even do the same to interested people, but that's already done, so we don't need to create any further, further uh, people here. So this is a very easy way um, to create, the, create an app like this to keep track of cats and interested people. What we haven't done, however, is work on the particular cat breed. So cat breed itself is something that's not visible on the page layout yet. Um, but we also need to classify it. So the first thing that we can do, and let me switch over to another org here that I have present, that uh, has some stuff pre-configured for this demo. If we take a look at that, let's open Lenny Kravitz for now. This already has the cat breed field on here. I'll show you how that was done. So if you click on the gear menu, and we'll go to Edit Page. This will take us to the Lightning App Builder. And if we then click on the Details page, like it is there, then we can, on the right-hand side, open the layout of this particular object. In the layout, we will be able to change what fields are visible. And as you can see, we have this little cat breed field here already deployed. I could drag it off like this, but I don't want to. But I could also add other fields to the, to the page layout, just like this. But since this is already done, let's now focus on classifying our cats. So when, again, in this Lightning App Builder, we want to change the layout of this page. And on the lower left side, you can see that we have an Einstein Vision cat uploader tool. We'll pick up the Lightning component and drag it all the way to the right and drop it on the page. We'll save the Lightning page and go back to Lenny's record just here. The cat breed field is still empty. Let's see if Einstein's image recognition is able to recognize Lenny. So we'll upload a file. And let's say Lenny would be a British short hair. So the file gets uploaded. And what happens behind the scenes is that this image is sent to Einstein, who will now do the image recognition. And if all is well, within now, in let's say 15 to 20 seconds, the cat breed should be recognized. And it should be populated in this field right there. So let's wait a short moment before this happens. There we are. So the image is recognized, and the cat breed field is now shown as a British short hair. So that's how easy it is to include Einstein's technology in the app that we have here. But we want to do one thing more, and that is notify people who are looking for a certain type of cat. And we can use Process Builder to do so. So let us switch to the Setup menu here to create such a process. Once in the Setup menu, we will go to Process Automation and open Process Builder. In Process Builder, we will create a new process to notify Bengal interested people. And the process will start whenever a record changes. We'll click Save. The next thing we do is tell it that we are interested in only the cat object, because that is what we're looking for here. So we'll scroll down and choose the cat object. And we'll tell it that the process should start when a record is created or edited. And we'll hit Save. Then we need to add some criteria to our process. And for us, we only want to evaluate this when the cat breed is Bengal. So the criteria name could be is Bengal. And well, we need to put some condition in there. So let's find the field cat breed. There we are. And let it evaluate that it should equal a pick list value, which is Bengal. And then under advanced, we'll just check this checkbox to make sure that the process only gets executed when the cat breed field changes. So if the name of the cat changes, we don't have to do anything. But if the cat breed field changes, when it is recognized, we want to notify the interested people. So that's good. 
And then we'll give it some action. So we'll add an action to this process. And we'll have it post the chatter. The action name is inform Beng Bengal interest group. And we'll post to a chatter group. The name of the chatter group, and it's already pre-configured, is Bengal interest. And we can give it a message like a new Bengal cat has arrived. And we click Save to confirm just this. Then we'll activate our little process and confirm the activation. So let's see if this works. So going back to Lenny's record, which already has been classified, but we, of course, haven't classified Alicia yet. So we upload another file here. And let's take the Bengal cat picture here and click Open. So Einstein will do the exact same trick. And it should, or there we go, it should classify Alicia Keys as being a Bengal cat. The process that we've built should also have been executed and have been made that chatter post on a chatter group. So we go to groups here, and we can see that we have three different chatter groups for different types of cat breeds. So let's open the Bengal interest group. And as expected, we see this chatter post that a new Bengal cat has arrived, just like we wanted it to do. So that all worked. Let's switch back to our little presentation. So we go there and open that. So we've built an app, and we've worked on a data model. We've used some pick list values that allow you to define the species of cat breed. Uh, we've used Process Builder. We've seen the Object Manager. We've seen Page Layouts. We've seen the Lightning App Builder, where you can drag Lightning components onto your screen, and, and more. And the process builder we've used to inform a Chatter group. So Chatter was also part of this app. So you've seen a few moving parts of the Salesforce platform. So what kind of apps can you actually build with the platform? It's not just sales apps. It's also not just service apps. And for sure, it's not just apps for animal shelters. Think of apps for IT, HR, finance, or legal. In all these areas, you can find apps that you can build. And the nice thing here is, that all the information which already resides in your platform, there might be customers, there might be accounts, there might be leads, there might be custom objects, you can use that information in any app you build on it because it's all shared. And using security and sharing rules, you will make sure that only the appropriate people have access to that information. As a final slide, if you're interested yourself in creating an app, I would highly suggest to take a look at Trailhead and earn the Platform Development Basics badge. There's a ton of stuff more that you can use within building custom apps that we haven't been able to touch today. Think of workflow, think of reports, think of dashboarding, think of sharing models. Those are all capabilities that you will use when you build your apps, and you can all find more information about that on Trailhead. So this was an introduction to the platform. I'd be happy to take any questions, should you have them. I thank you for listening to my talk, and I wish you a very pleasant time at Dreamforce. Thank you.